Yes. Today we're looking at this. Red, a bayonet made out of electricity. Hello and welcome to this week's Spotlight. My name is Derek and today we are checking out this, the Magneto Speed V3 Chronograph. So chronographs to me fall in that category of things that are really nice to have but are really annoying to purchase. I mean, for 380 bucks, I mean, these days that's 600 rounds of 556, five, that's, you know, that's this and that. I could definitely think of other things that are more satisfying at first to purchase than a chronograph, but it is very safe to say that having a chronograph is well worth it and is very nice to have. Of course, the basic premise is the chronograph senses the velocity of the bullet coming out of your weapon and gives you the velocity and a bunch of other figures with it. And that's nice to have with, with the proliferation of ballistic range finders, ballistic scopes, kestrels, and all that sort of stuff. Knowing your exact muzzle velocity is critical to making sure that those things work properly. So it does more than just sense the velocity of the bullet. On this display here, it'll show you the last couple strings of shots and it'll show you the average of that string as well as the standard deviation. The average, pretty sure you can figure out, standard deviation is a little bit more complicated. Oversimplified, what standard deviation really means is how far from the average velocity do most of your shots land? So as an example, let's say you have uh, an average velocity of 2,800 feet per second. If you have a standard deviation of 20, that means that a vast majority of your shots are gonna be 20 feet per second higher or 20 feet per second lower than the average. So having a smaller standard deviation is better. You wanna make sure that your, that your velocities are as consistent as they can be. But to that point, it is worth it to consider that to get a standard deviation figure that's that's worth taking seriously. You can't just put five rounds down the, down the range and use that. You have to have more. Uh, consensus is about 30 plus rounds is necessary to really get a good SD figure. It's fairly straightforward to mount up, has this strap over top that you just kind of pull to tighten on to your weapon. And then there's a little knob down here that you can use to really torque it down. And you want to have it mounted with the muzzle to be about an inch or so away from this point right here. Of course, this little piece of metal here will act as a blast shield for all the gases that come out, but you want about a one inch gap with that. Then you take your metal stick and you put it right here on the end of it. And ideally you want the bottom of the bore to pretty much line up with the top of this stick. Ideally you wanna be about a quarter inch to maybe as close as one eighth of an inch for that. Of course, there's, there is a bit of tolerance there, so a larger bullet can be a little bit over a quarter and you'll still be fine. Um, if you do shoot a smaller round, like a 22, or even this is good for subsonic and supersonic air rifles as well, uh, having that closer to the bore, near that one eighth of an inch mark is really gonna help you out. You can change the settings on it via an app on your phone, but uh, first thing to do is to just Try and put it a little bit closer, which you can do because the uh, V3 comes with a lot of this stuff here. It'll come with these spacers, cable, the display, another wire here. Uh, this is a suppressor shield. As you can see, it's mounted to my Omega suppressor on my Mark 18. If you're shooting slow enough, your, your suppressor is not gonna get that hot to melt the strap, but if you're doing a decent amount of shooting, this will protect your strap from melting off. And it has the aforementioned metal stick. One more thing that I found really interesting about this is that it'll work on shotguns. And you have to turn off the sensitivity of it because a shotgun wad and all that stuff is not as easily defined as a rifle bullet, but uh, it will be able to sense the velocity of a shotgun 
wad and load and that, that coming out here. I know that's not as common. Uh, it's not as important to many as something like a rifle or a pistol cal carbine or something like that, but it is a nice feature to have. It also has a rapid fire mode. So if you attach it to a weapon like my Mark 18 here, it'll sense a shot string. It'll tell you the maximum rounds per minute, the minimum and the average. It will work up to about 1100 rounds per minute. So if you have a full automatic, there's not too, too many guns out there that'll get that, except Jerry Mitchell arc, of course. So you want to shoot fast, huh? <laughs> Some other accessories out here on the table that uh, don't come with it but are worth looking at. These here are uh, tapered spacers and basically you would use these if you have a uh, rifle barrel, most likely a bolt action like a hunting rifle barrel that has a pretty steep taper from the breech to the muzzle. Most of the time these aren't really that necessary but if you have a pretty aggressive taper on your barrel it'll these will help prevent the tip of this from being pitched upward and into the flight path of the bullet. You can also get this Picatinny rail adapter. If I was not using my suppressor on here, I would have no way to mount the V3 onto my Mark 18 without something like this. So good to have if you have a muzzle that is very close to your handguard. One more thing that might be relevant to you is the large brake adapter. So if you have something like a big old 50 cal or some other rifle with an absurdly large muzzle brake, this helps to get the sensor around the muzzle brake so you can actually use it. Looks like this, it, it, it'll just uh, clamp onto your barrel like that, then you would mount the sensor up here. It actually does also come with that pick rail adapter. So if you do need the large brake adapter, you do not need to also buy this adapter by itself. Not sure if you can see this or not, but the, here's a picture of the uh, diagram so you can understand what it looks like on a gun here without us having to edit in another stolen picture from the internet. Second is the rifle cool. It's spelled like the clothing company, I guess you can say. But what this little guy does is it uh, inserts itself into your chamber and a fan sucks in some air through here and it blows it out here down your bore. It's a very quick and proper way of cooling down your barrel because if you try and cool it down too quickly, like pouring water on it, uh, doing that to metal is not ideal, especially when you don't want that metal to change its properties a little bit, maybe even warp in a small, small way perhaps. But on a precision rifle barrel, you don't want to be pouring water on it because that's really annoying and not good for it. But uh, I, I will say these things, um, they work really well. It'll cool a barrel down to ambient in about seven minutes or so, but uh, it is fairly loud. And if you're at the range at a match or something, there's a bunch of other shooters around you wearing those, those uh, electronic earplugs or headphones, they will kind of look at you funny as soon as you flick one of these on. It works though. And lastly, we have the T1000 hit indicator. T1000. And what this thing basically does is it attaches to the back of a steel plate. And when you hit the, the steel with your bullet, it will project a red blinking light that you can see from your firing position. So it pretty much sits on the steel and poke out kind of like that. Of course, since it's mounted to your steel target, there is a possibility that you will actually shoot it. And that's okay. It'll take up a few bullets, no, no problem. It is made out of a very soft sort of rubbery type material. And if you shoot this too many times, this little clear piece does come off and there is a second one in the box. So it is a serviceable part. It will take bullets from 22 up to 50 cal and uh, 
Quick mention on that second round, we'll be using one of these at a range here over the coming weeks with a 50 cal Barrett. So definitely wanna check that out. So one last thing I wanna mention before we conclude here is this is the V3. There is another one on the market that we sell called the Sporter. It's about half the price and you do get less as such. So whereas this one here, you can see it mounts happily to a suppressor. Uh, the V3 will, will go on a suppressor or a barrel that's up to two inches in diameter with a minimum of half an inch. Whereas a Sporter will only do barrels from 0.5 to one inch thick. This will do 22s and air guns and shotguns. The Sporter will only do center fire rifle. The V3's display will do the last couple shots, the average and the SD. The display on the Sporter will just do the velocity and you can scroll to find the average and that sort of thing. And the Sporter doesn't come with as many mounts and such. So if that's all you need, that's fine. The Sporter will work for you. But to future proof yourself, I think it's well worth it to get the V3. So to wrap it up, it is a very valuable tool to have in your collection of gun things. Also makes a very good Christmas gift. It's uh, Christmas by the time this video releases is a little over a week away. And uh, we do have red one day shipping on this. So you can wait until the last minute like an idiot and still make the order and get it on time. So this would make a very good gift to a precision shooter, hunter or whomever in your family or friends. As always, please like and subscribe. We have uh, videos coming out every week. Most of them are the spotlight, but we have some really cool ones in the pipeline that you will not want to miss. Also like us on Facebook and see us on Instagram and we'll see you next week.